What's up, nerds? This is Beavs, and today we are breaking down a synth wave track. I did not come up with this uh, concept. This is pretty much a cover of an existing track called, I wrote it down, uh, artist name Jamie Bathgate, and name of the track, Down Over Melpomene. I hope I pronounced it right. I'm going to write it down uh, below anyway, and in the description as well. So, uh, first thing I wanted to show you is the intro fields over here. So, let's play it. So uh, these snares, I'm pretty much using these snares as toms almost. And uh, speaking of toms, they were not uh, these snares were not thunderous enough. They were too light for uh, what I wanted uh, to convey. So what I did in this case, I just bump up the uh, the fundamental, and that works with pretty much all of the percussion. If you want to have the more thunderous vibe, a uh, good thing is to bump up this fundamental. So let me play it without this EQ boost over here. All right, and now with. All right, and on top of this, I also have a, a pitch envelope toward the end of the sample to give it a little bit of movement. And uh, also another thing to notice is that here for the last two hits, uh, since I'm playing the same one shot, uh, pitching down, you know, depending on the what midi note I'm playing, but here when it was really low, there was some artifacts going on. So what I did, I just duplicated it and had like another, just another sample altogether, uh, layered with some toms. So these are the ones. All right, so let's play the whole thing. Right there you go. Then uh, kick snare, and as you can see, I have my snare layered with a symbol. So um, I usually try to avoid um, any sort of additive EQ. To me, in my ear, it's uh, adding uh, too much noise. So for example, in this case, uh, the snare was sounding a little too dull. So adding this layer here, this, that symbol, it's filling these frequencies that I was missing. So together, and without the symbol. All right, if you wanna hear kick and snare together, let's go for it. Then hi-hats, uh, nothing sexy in this case. Um, just have like a, yeah, just one shots and here a shaker. Um, uh, okay, so on the shaker, I do have Sooth. It's a new plugin that I discovered not too long ago, and it's great to remove any recent frequencies. It works on almost anything, but uh, especially effective. Um, I noticed on uh, vocals for DS, dehessing or uh, shakers, for example. So in this case, let me uh, play with and without it. All right. Uh, also, sometimes on shakers, uh, when I bring them in into the session, I like to try to transpose it down. I mean, I didn't do it here in this case, but uh, I always try to see if it fits better uh, into the mix. I like to just check it. Actually, let me play the whole drum uh, section. Yeah, but tra transposing down the shaker can sometimes give more room for the hi for your hi-hats that are uh, supposed to be uh, very bright. Okay, so that was for the drums. Then let's move on into the bass. Okay, so this bass is pretty much a 1 16th uh, bass pluck, which is pretty much the uh, signature of any synth wave track. So let me play it uh, without the side chain first. I'm gonna play also with a kick snare. And now with the side chain. And all these layers are from a spire, I believe, yes. Let's see, tack. 
Yeah, and some of them have uh, Spiff. So Spiff is a plugin from the same company as Sooth, the one I just showed you on the shaker. Pretty much does the same thing, but only on the transient, all right? So if, if you have any harsh uh, sound with uh, transient that are too pronounced, uh, which is most of the case for uh, any of these uh, overproduced uh, presets, uh, that's very uh, helpful. So uh, that's for the 1 16th bass. Then we can go below, these are the keys. All right, so what you see here, this automation is the dry weight of uh, Volume Shaper. So Volume Shaper is uh, it's like a sidechain uh, plugin. It's like a pretty much a volume envelope. So I'm, I'm only turning down uh, when the kick, the first kick is playing. Um, although I, in this case, I thought it sounded better to let the chord die out for the rest of the measure. Uh, so I'm only having this, uh, this little um, fade in in the first uh, downbeat. That's why I have this automation. So this all the way, um, this 100% uh, wet and this is dry, dry here. So we have two uh, set, two layers, of course, it's, it's the same MIDI part. And the first one is a spire and there's a little bit of a cutoff automation. That's what you see here. I could have done the cutoff automation, I mean the cutoff movement with uh, the envelope within Spire, but I wanted a different movement for each chord, especially because this one is a little longer. So that's why I ended up having, uh, just drawing the automation. And even visually it looks, it's easier uh, to draw and uh, yeah, it just turned out to be a lot easier this way. And this automation here is actually uh, me thinning out the chord as it's uh, sus being sustained. So if I, I think it's with this one, with this instance of pro, pro, pro Q. And then there's another automation and that's the dry weight of uh, the phaser, all right? So especially helpful here for the last chord because the last chord is longer than the other ones. So it's getting a little too, uh, too boring for two measures like this. So that's why we have the phaser and the uh, automation, all right? And then uh, uh, the other one is the same part, but with Lush, all right? It's just to add more texture to it. And I don't think I added too much in terms of automation. Uh, I, it's kind of the same automation, but definitely not as obvious as the one before. Then we have two more basses, uh, but these basses are not a 16th note. So I guess you can see these ones more as a groove, uh, definitely has like a, a creative uh, purpose. This one is more of a support for the frequencies of the chords, all right, to really thicken up the chords. So this one are sustain, and the first layer is uh, lush. It also has some sort of growling, and I'm sure if I bring up the frequencies, you're gonna see uh, the you're gonna see like the movement from right to left. All right, and the other one is uh, just for the sub. Cool, then we have uh, another set here. And so these are pretty much the same chords as the sustain one, but they are not sustain. Just like very short bursts, but with a lot of delay and reverb. And when there's a lot of like atmospheric uh, reverb like this, I usually have a multiband distortion afterward to really, uh, I mean, it's, it makes the dry signal and the wet signal really uh, gel together. And uh, because the reverb can get lost in a context of a full mix uh, sometimes, so. And on top of that, uh, so these are going into their own bus, the key, uh, keys bells. And I'm also having a M compressor from Melda. And the uh, reason why I'm using this one is because it has the feature of having um, uh, upward compression, meaning turning up the quietest signals as opposed to turning down the loudest, which is like a, any traditional uh, compressor would do. 
So the, the advantage is that you don't touch touch your transient, you only bring up either um, the delay or the reverb of the tail of your sound. Then we have the ARPM, and uh, with the ARPM, what did I do? So pretty much the same concept, a lot of delay, a lot of reverb, but on top of this, I really wanted this part to be washed out, so I have an aux return with a, a delay and reverb over the top, but this channel is being sidechained by the, uh, the actually by the actual uh, lead ARP. So um, in the silences, this reverb is being bring up to life, all right? So. And even made it even more obvious at the end here, at the end of the measure, of the, of the section. So that's for the ARP. Here we have some guitars that I played. And if you want to know, I used uh, the amp, the pretty much the, um, the standard Marshall amp from UAD. So let's play that. All right, and as you can see, I even used Sooth on the guitar to make it, I guess there was like some nasty frequencies going on. And the last thing I wanted to show you in this session is the crash. Um, so, Usually with the uh, symbol samples, there's always some like resonant frequencies that are bothering me. So I have my own little preset uh, that allows me to blend some white noise with the crash symbol. So as you can see in slot A, I have a crash um, sample and in slot B, I have a white noise. So depending on the project, usually if it's something more on the EDM side, I tend to be more on the, um, on the white noise. And if it's something more organic, I tend to have more of, a, of the crash. So let's listen to the crash alone. And then the white noise. All right, sounds a lot more smooth, but also not as uh, organic. So in this case, I went for about like 25%, I guess. And also have a little bit of a volume envelope to leave room uh, for the kick drum. All right, so these were the concepts I wanted to show you guys in this session. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.